Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Christ Center Church. My name is Brother Ethan Scarlett, and I'm here just to give you a couple quick announcements for the month of April, things that we do on a weekly and monthly basis, as well as some events coming up for this month. Every Sunday morning, starting at 9 a.m., we have adult Sunday school. Feel free to join us before our Sunday morning worship service. Uh, we have amazing teachers that are breaking down the word and breaking down scripture in an intimate way. Feel free to stop by and join us. Uh, and then during our Sunday morning worship service, we have children's church for ages 5 to 15. Our children are loving children's church right now. If your child is not here or you haven't heard about children's church from 5 to 15, feel free to get them involved. God is doing some great things in our young people, but in our adult Sunday school as well. We don't want to hide you from the word. Come join us. Every Tuesday evening, beginning at 7.30 p.m., we have our discipleship series. If you're looking to grow in the word of God or uh, understand the word a little bit deeper, this is the platform for you. Feel free to see one of our ushers, our greeters, our media team. This happens on Zoom. We can get you the Zoom link and you can join us. If you haven't joined us for our morning connections, I recommend you join us. Monday through Friday from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m., we join on Zoom for a time of corporate prayer. Start your morning off on the right note. God is doing something amazing in our church, and we know everything begins and ends with prayer. Whether you want to join us for 5, 10, 15, 30 minutes, or the entire hour, stop on by, join us on Zoom. You don't have to show your face. You can turn your camera off, but we'd love for you to pray with us. On Wednesdays, from 12.30 p.m. to 1.30 p.m., we're here in the house for our Wednesday afternoon connections. Feel free to stop by on your lunch break, midday. Just come by, pray with us for an hour, and you can resume your day. But we have this time of prayer, and we hope that you will join us. All right, young people, this next announcement's for you. Friday, April 19th, we have our District Move the Mission kickoff rally. The service is happening in Prospect Park, New Jersey. This is not a service that you want to miss. Feel free to join us. Bring your friends. We're going to have a great time in the Lord. Dynamic praise and worship. Dynamic preaching. We want to see you there. Join us Sunday, April 28th for our Friends and Family Day. Invite your friends, your family, your co-workers, your neighbors. It's going to be an awesome time in the Lord. Hope to see you guys there. And these are your announcements for the month of April. Be sure to check us out on social media, on Instagram at CCC Online, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube page, both at Christ Center Church. Let's get ready to worship the Lord together. God bless. Praise the Lord, somebody. Come on, I say praise the Lord, somebody. 
Anybody happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Can we stand to our feet? Just turn to your neighbor and say, it's good to see you this morning. If they didn't say it with a smile on, your, on their face, you're looking at the wrong person. Look at somebody else and say, it's good to see you this morning. Make sure you see some teeth. Come on. We're here to rejoice and praise the name of Jesus. Let's worship and praise the name together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, can we put our hands together? Everybody clap your hands. in here. God bless everyone. 
Come on, put your hands together. Give God praise. We're excited to be here in the house of God this morning. And I know I'm alive. Listen, we have breath in our body. Come on. Listen, we're not in the cold, cold uh, clay, which is called the earth. We're in a, not in a casket. We're not missing. We are here in Jesus' name. And we are giving God thanks because we know that everything that will have breath must praise the Lord. Listen, when we wake up in the morning and you hear the birds chirping, they're giving glory to the creator. When you see the sun shining, you see that is the handiwork of God. For the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament show with his handiwork. Listen, I think, was it this, this is it last week we saw the eclipse? Was that, was that it? Okay, listen, people say that's, that's just nature. That's, they, people were crying. No, listen, it's just God at work, saints of God. And people are not knowing that the signs of the times are saying that we are here just for just a few more hours, seconds, days. Trust me, we had earthquakes. You're we hearing things happening, but the church is still here. The rapture didn't happen because I'm still here. I don't know about you. Because I don't plan to be here when, when this chaos is going to unfold. We're going to do the will of God. And that's why Christ and the church is here for a purpose. Because we are here to see Hamilton. We're here to see Mercer. We're here to see everything that we touch. People who we contact, come in contact with, changed by the power of his name. Amen. Saints of God, you're going to see great works done through this church. People are going to be sent out, as Pastor been saying, God is going to do some great things through this ministry. And we're going to pray and believe God today. I really feel a strong urge, and not everyone's here, but please keep in mind the ministry leaders of this church. Please keep in mind those who will serve in this capacity. Please keep, I know you don't have a name or there's like a, put a face to a name, but everyone from the youth, from the children down to those who are serving the senior ministry. Saints of God, we need to do God's work. And we're going to work until while it's day. For the night will come where no man's going to work. We're here to serve you. We're here to serve the people of God. We're going to also keep in mind today, pray for Daniel Neal. That's the uh, cousin of the Jones family uh, right now. I don't know if Pastor was informed, but he is right now missing in New York. That's the family of Sister Jones, the Crooks family. He was um, missing from last night. Let's pray that God will find him. Listen, there's a GPS that can go beyond the physical technology that we can track where he is and we can pray in the spirit that God will find that man and will turn to home. We're going to pray for Brother Crooks right now, also in the uh, IR or uh, ER. He's still there? Yes. Pray for Sister Jones. We're going to pray for our pastor and his family. And I said, we're going to pray for every ministry leader. We're going to pray for our pastor and his family because, listen, the work of the Lord is, is, is great. But there's so much opportunity, so much excitement because I'm excited where we're going. But we got to lift each other in, in prayer. The, the, the hand of war is up. And we need Ur and we need Aaron to hold up our pastor's hand and lift him up because we have the victory. Come on, let the church say we have the victory. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, this church is a victorious church. We believe that, God, you're at work. And, God, when we don't see it, you're working. So, God, we believe right now as we come together, let's think on these things. Whatsoever things are honest, true, of good report, whatever things are lovely, let us know that if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, let us think on these things. So we shall think and believe that yet Mr. Daniel Neal shall be found. Father, we are believing God that wherever he is, God, send your radar, send your GPS, send your, oh God, technology in the spirit to reach him. Let him return home. God, we need, look God, a breakthrough today for the Jones family, a breakthrough today for the Crooks family, a breakthrough today for our pastor Oh, God, and his lovely family, we need a breakthrough, God, for every ministry leader. God, we're putting them at the altar, God. We are putting us at a place where, God, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. In the name of Jesus, we believe that shackles and burdens will be brought down. We pray every casting down imaginations. 
We pray for salvation today. We pray for those who need to know the Lord Jesus Christ in the pardoning of their sins, in repentance, in baptism, in the name of Jesus Christ. We need, Lord God, the fresh dose of the Holy Ghost to sit upon us today. We need to be understand that we are revised, we are revitalized, that God, we are called to do a work, and the work is great. And we pray that God, you will anoint us, you will, oh God, stretch forth your love upon this church. And I pray, Lord God, that every wicked enemy, every fool, every, every opposition against this church, uh, we bring them down that no weapon formed against us, no weapon, no such thing that shall against come against this church, Christ-centered church, for what we must do for this community, what we must do for each family that enters through those doors. It shall not, it will not, it cannot prosper. We have the victory. We have the victory. We have the victory in Jesus' name. And every devil and every, oh God, high place uh, shall be brought down by the power and by the presence of God in this place. Touch and agree for the praise and worship team that as they minister, God, that they're ministering not unto only us, but they're ministering to you that, God, burdens will be brought down. Oh, God, burdens will be lifted. Souls will be edified. And, Lord God, the minister of the word will go forth, oh, God, with power and with authority. We speak those things in the name of Jesus. Let us open our mouths, saints of God. Let me hear a sound of victory. A sound of victory. A sound of victory in this place. Let's lift up holy hands. Let's lift up our hearts. Let's lift up our souls. For the Lord shall return for his church. And we shall be with him. We shall be caught up with him. We are excited for the future of our church in Jesus' name. same breath, stars fell in line, with one voice, creation cries, you do all things well, you do all things well, so be worship him in the room. You get the glory, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. When 
our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over oh, you made a way And we're standing here And we're standing here Only because you made Sing you made You made a way Sing you made You you may be seated for a few minutes. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. We want to take this time out to greet everyone in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We want to welcome everyone into the house of God this morning. Amen. Another beautiful day to be alive and well. Amen. There's so much turmoil that's going on in the world today, but God made a way for us to be here. Amen. He has kept us. He has protected us. He has provided for us. He has made ways when there seems to be no way. He has opened up doors for us that no man can shut. He's the one that have all power in his hand. Amen. To do exceedingly, abundantly above that which we ask or think. We're serving a mighty God whose name is Jesus. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did for you, he did for me. What he did for me, he can do for you just the same. That's the God that we're serving this morning. Amen. And we're so glad to be a part of this great big happy family of God. Amen. We want to welcome you one more time. Our online congregation will welcome you this morning to Christ Center Church where Christ is our central focus of everything that we do. Amen. This facility, God has opened up doors for us to be here. And we want to make sure that whatever we do, it's unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask all our guests, all our guests that is here for the first and second time. If you're a guest here this morning, here for the first time, I'm going to ask you to stand so that we can recognize you. If you're a guest here for the first or the second time, we're going to ask you to stand with us. Remain standing. Amen. Is there any other guest that is here for the first or second time? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to let this time, let you know this time, just continue to remain standing for a few more seconds. We won't keep you standing too long. But we want to let you know that how much we greatly appreciate you taking your Sunday to be here, to be a part of Christ Center Church. Amen. Whatever we can do to help you with 
your walk with the Lord, we are here because Christ it was, is our central focus. Whatever we do, amen, in the house of God, amen, we do it with all love because God so loved us that he died for us. And we're here to let you know how much we appreciate you, amen. If you have not yet met with our pastor, we'd ask you to make sure you see your pastor before you go through the doors this morning. God bless you. We may be seated. Again, we want to thank you for being here this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, give all our guests another round of applause this morning. Amen. Let them know how much we appreciate them and love them. Amen. Praise God. I want to also greet and welcome Bishop Naylor. Whenever I see Bishop and Sister Naylor, amen. You know, they're, they're my, my parents. I refer to them as my parents, and I do give due honor to you where honor is due. Give honor to you. Amen. And I, I want to give a special shout out to Brother Jones because he said it's, it's my dad this morning. So, Brother Jones walking around, tell everybody that, you know, that's my son. That's my daughter. Because today is his birthday. So he want everybody to know that he is the parents of everybody. So Brother John, special shout out to you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So good to see Zuri and Craig. Amen. In the house of God this morning. Amen. Shout out. Special shout out to you. And for everyone that is here. Amen. My barber, Greenfield. Amen. That's the best barber that I know. Amen. That's my friend. Amen. I'm going to always give shout out to Greenfield. Amen. I, I love everyone. If I start to call name here this morning, I'm going to get myself in trouble. But I just want to let you all know how much we love you, how much we appreciate you, how much we thank you for being being a part of Christ Center Church. Amen. What God is doing for us in the time and the hour that we're living in, if there is ever a time we need to get closer to God, is now. We can see the signs and the writing on the wall that the coming of Christ can be at any moment. Amen. And we need to be ready that when the trumpet sound, we will be ready to make heaven our home. That's where we are destined to be and we want to make sure we make our calling and election sure unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Everyone said it's offering time. Amen. We're going to ask our children that is from the age of 5 to the age of 15, if you can stand. We're going to invite everyone else to stand with all our children over there, brother over there holding the sign over there. All our children, if you can make uh, right or left over and follow them right into the fellowship hall. Brother Tom is at the door. We're going to invite everyone else to please stand if you can stand this morning with us as we get ready to receive our offering this morning. And we're going to ask you to give a genuine good offering this morning. If you came here with a mindset set just to give X amount. Amen. We pray that the Lord will bless you to give a little bit more than what you plan to give this morning. Why? Because the Bible said to much, to whom much is given, much is required. So we, sometimes we spend our money and things that we you don't really benefit anything. We don't really benefit much from it. But when we give into the house of God, we can see where it's going. It's for the beautification of his kingdom. So we want to give a good offering this morning. The Lord will bless you more than you can imagine our things. So if you want to pay electronically, we have two devices in the back there. Amen. You can pay your giving this morning electronically back there. And if you need an envelope, you can raise your hand. The ushers will be glad to give you an envelope this morning. So we're going to ask you to bow your heads if you can stand with us one more time as we pray and as we get ready to receive the offering this morning. Father God, we love you. We thank you, Lord God, for the worship in this place this morning. We thank you for the spirit of God that we felt in this place this morning. Father God, we ask you to continue to move up on every portion of the service, oh God. As we're about to receive, Lord God, this morning offering, we ask your blessing upon every giver, oh God, those who have not liked Likewise, make way they too can receive from you, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, that you'll bless this facility. Bless our pastor and his family. Bless, oh God, Bishop Neil and his family. Oh God, bless every leaders that are here, every visitors that are here. Bless them and keep them, oh God. We ask your anointing upon us. Help us, Lord God, to continue to serve you with all our heart. We give you all the glory and all the honor as we say thanks. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Bring your tithes and offering unto the Lord. Continue to worship the Lord with us in Jesus' name name. Amen.
I see it. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Oh, we give you honor and praise, oh great God. There is none like you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless your name, oh great King. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we honor you. Jesus, we bless your name, oh great God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Will somebody just clap their hands, lift their voice, and just begin to give him a shout of praise. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of all the honor. We're breathing and living and moving because of the great one, and his name is Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. We owe it all to him. We owe it all to him. We owe it all to Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I hope by now you realize that our family of God is not about entertainment. We have wonderful singers, wonderful musicians, but we're not here to entertain. This is about Jesus. This is about us being who he created us to be. This is about us worshiping him. This is about us praising him. Oh, Jesus, we honor you. We honor you. Unfortunately, these days, when we go to the house of the Lord, it's more about entertainment. And we're not about our lives being changed. Jesus wants to change our life. He wants to transform our lives because no matter where any of us really are today, God has so much more for us. So you might be doing the best you've ever done, but the Lord still has more for you. The life that he has for you is so much more than what you can even ask or even think. He's got great plans for your life. He wants to make a great, great wonderful just life for you but we have to come and say Lord I will praise you through your praise and through your worship transformation begins to happen if we never praise and we never worship there will be no transformation but even if you don't know the songs and even if you don't know how to worship Lifting your hands is a form of surrenderance. And when you lift your hands and say, God, I might not know all the songs. I don't have a voice to sing. But what I will do is lift my hands and say, I surrender, Lord. I surrender all to you. I surrender all to you because you are my God. You know what I need. And God, I say, do what you want to do in my life. I surrender to you. Praise him. Welcome. Welcome to Christ Center Church, where Christ is our central focus. That's, that's what it's all about. He is everything. And so we're grateful today. And we thank him for another opportunity to come in the house of the Lord. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone. And when we come into the house of the Lord, it's so vitally important that we act like this could be our last day. We don't know. We don't know. And so every opportunity we get. I also like to say this to every time I get a chance to speak to you, I want to tell you, you don't go to every church and they give you an opportunity to truly be saved. So when you come to a church like this, we always give you an opportunity to be saved. Because we're not Jesus, and we don't know when our last day will be. 
and it's, it is vitally important that every chance we get to get closer to him, every chance we get to surrender our life to him, we need to do it. We can't wait till tomorrow. Understand this. You may not be ready to surrender to Jesus, but he's ready for you. Now, who will you follow? Yourself or the one that knows everything? The one that died for you because he loves you that much. And so a lot of times we said, I'm not ready. I'm just not ready. When Jesus is calling, don't worry about if you're ready or not. You can't get a better call from anybody. When Jesus is calling, whether you're ready or not, you say, yay, Lord, speak to me. And whatever you want me to do, that's what I'll do. Thank you, Jesus. Before I get into the Word of God, this is still still within what we want to do. Tim, Rosalie, come here real quick. How long you been in this church, Rosalie? Four years. Tim, how long you been here? A year and a couple months. Well, on March 30th, at 3 p.m., we had a little private wedding ceremony for these two. They only had their parents, grandparents, my wife and I, that was here. They wanted to make it private, and we honored that. But as you know, it's hard to keep things like this private. Tim was funny. Tim said, I'm wearing my ring. <laughs> you might not understand that. That's a big thing. When you get a guy to get married, says, well, I'm wearing my ring. I want them to know. And I think that's just awesome that he wanted that. And so they wanted to keep it private, but they realized they couldn't keep it private. So here it is. They just wanted you to know this morning. Make sure you congratulate them and be a blessing to them. Let me also say this. Understand this about wedding. The people who are getting married are who is most important not the people that are being invited. And when you love people, you're just glad that they did the right thing and they were blessed by God. Also, too, remember this. Weddings are expensive. And whether we consider it or not, the people who are getting married spend the money up front. And most of the time, they don't get it back. So they're really spending money to have a big party for you to celebrate with them. And they can only afford but so much money. So sometimes there, there's going to be weddings that we can't make it to. And we just need to say, that's okay. I love them. And I'm going to make sure if I can give them something, I'll give them something. I'll celebrate with them. But it's okay if I don't get invited. Because some people just have big families. And when you have big families, big money. So they're going to do a celebration in November. And again, just understand, if you get invited, great. If you don't, just say, I love them. Let them enjoy themselves because they have a big family. So be there for them, love them, and understand what they're doing. And they're doing it all unto the Lord. These two love God. And God is going to do some great things in their life. They really do. Anybody that knows them know they are some good people. And I love them dearly, and they've been a blessing to this church since they've been here. Thank you both. God bless you. That's what happened in the family of God. All kind of things go on. All kind of things go on. So while you're standing, if you could turn your Bibles with me to Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 19. Again, it's good to see everyone in the house of the Lord. We're so glad that you made it out today. I pray today the word of God will help you. If, if, if this is your first or second time or you, you, you're not a regular here, uh, I, I think we try to do our very best to teach the word of God more than we're concerned about preaching the word of God. 
And I pray that today you will listen real good. That you will make notes. Take notes. Tell your neighbor, take notes. Uh-huh. If you can't take notes with paper and a pen, get out your phone and find a note section. And take notes by typing. But we need to make sure we take notes. The words that you hear from this pulpit is significant because it's from the Bible. We're not a traditional church for what some of you are accustomed to. We, we try to operate strictly by scripture, by the word of God. The other day at Bible study, I, I, I got done teaching. No, last Sunday, I got done teaching and one of our sister came up to me, Sister Murrah came up to me and said, Pastor, you forgot to tell us what the, the, the third death is. Because I was talking about there's three different deaths. I said the first death is, is physical. The second one is spiritual. And she said, what's the third one? The third one was when hell is cast into the lake of fire. So it says the death. It says the dead and hell will be cast in the lake of fire. So the third death is when everything is over and get cast in the lake of fire. But I so appreciate it because it meant she was listening and she was taking notes. So I appreciate you, Sister Merle. She took notes and she wanted to know all what was going on. So we want you to learn because remember what I said last week when I started. Many people go from church to church because... You are not grounded in the word of God. And when you're not grounded in the word of God, whatever you hear that makes sense to you, you're drawn to it. And then that becomes your truth. That becomes your Bible. But it, it's only that it sounded good. The question we need to ask is, where is it in the scripture? Because I don't care how it sounds, I want to know where is that in the scripture. And once it's there, whether I like it or I don't, it's my responsibility to obey it. The preacher don't like some of the words in the Bible. Y'all think the preacher like all the words? Man, there's some things this preacher said, man, God. But just like you, I don't have a choice. I got to obey it. He knows what's best. And so whether we like it or we don't, we do it. And I think sometimes we struggle because it's all about if we like what we hear, or we don't like what we hear. And that determines how we live our life as children of God and, and, and where we go to church. But what should determine where you go to church is, are they preaching the truth, the word of God? That's the first thing you need to make sure is clear. Do they preach the word of God? Or do they tell me what I like to hear? Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 19. The word of God says, now you are... no." I'm reading in a different version so it can be clear to you. It says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19. Now you are no longer strangers to God and foreigners to heaven. But you are members of God's very own family. Citizens of God's country. And you belong in God's household with every other Christian. What a foundation you stand on now. The apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone of the building is Jesus Christ himself. We who believe are carefully joined together with Christ as part of a beautiful, constantly growing temple of God. And you also are joined with him and with each other by the Spirit and are part of this dwelling place of God. I want to talk to you this morning on this topic. The family of God. The family of God. Lord Jesus, we love you. Your presence is here. Your presence is within us. And Lord, we just want you to touch us in a special way. We want our lives to be transformed even more. We want your will for each and every one of us to be done. Will you manifest your power in the midst of this congregation that every need will be exceeded, Lord? 
For as you know, God, we have great needs here today. Some of the needs we have, we don't even understand what they are. We don't even know what they are. But Lord Jesus, you know every need we have, whether we know them or we can other them, you know them. Will you meet us here in such a miraculous way that we will not walk out of here the same way, but there will be, oh God, a supernatural divine move of your spirit upon us and in us, that our life will never be the same again and we're able to make the commitment and declaration to do what you have commanded to us in your word. We love you Jesus. We thank you for what you've already done, what you're doing right now and what you will do throughout this service. We give you praise and honor for who you are for you are great and mighty and we ask you all these things in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Let us all say amen. 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 You may be seated. I want to greet our online congregation. We have some really faithful people that are always online. Our, our podcast and, and our live stream um, is always promoted, and you can always hear it at any one of our social media platforms, and you can always uh, listen. But there are some people that are just faithful uh, to the service online live. And so Arlene Dixon is one of those faithful people um, that, that is always tuned in, and we appreciate her so much, and uh, we love her. And um, Joe and Barbara Correa, they're always on. Uh, we love them dearly. And we're just thankful for all those who join us every week uh, on our online um, congregation there. Um, some of them wish they could be here in person, but they're far away. And um, they haven't felt comfortable to go to a church in person in their area, so they have joined us online. And as I had mentioned before, and um, some of you might not know this, but I, I always say that if someone join us online and they hear the word of God and they want to respond to the word of God, like Joe and Barbara, when I, I preached and says, you must be born again, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, have your, all your sins washed away. And I preached that, and they heard online. And they found out that I was going to be in Florida after I preached that. And they called me up and says, hey, we want to get baptized when you come down to Florida. And so when I went down to Florida, I called up a pastor friend of mine and said, hey, would like to use your church to baptize someone, and went down there and baptized them. So they're baptized in Jesus' name <laughs> online. And I, I continue to keep that out there, that if someone that's tuned in and listening and they want to follow the word and they want me to come and do it, there's no, there's no limits to doing God's will. If you were in Australia, you said, man, I need to get baptized, and I recommend someone, and you said, no, I want you to come. I'm going to Australia. <laughs> and you think I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. I know the life that I lived before Christ, and I traveled to the ends of the earth to go to a party. Just so you know. So ain't no place that I won't go for a soul. I don't play them games. The family of God. Listen to me. By faith, obedience to God's word, repentance, baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. What is called the born again experience is the way we are born into God's family. I know we all want to feel like we just need to believe. And as long as we're all believers, we're part of God's family. Doesn't work that way. This wonderful family of God is called the church. As born-again believers, we are all brothers and sisters in one family. No matter what racial, national, physical distinction we possess, we are all the family of God if we have been born again of the water and of the Spirit. The church is so significant that Jesus Christ died on the cross for it. It's the only thing the Lord Jesus Christ ever had to purchase, and he did so with his very own blood. Can you imagine God had to buy something, the one who owns everything? 
But I'll let you go do some research on that. God had to buy the church with his very own blood. He purchased the church, became his with his blood. As the family of God, we are blood relatives. Blood is thicker than water. We've said that for a long time, and so some of our relatives that are not in church tells us, well, we blood. Well, I'm blood with the church, too. So ain't no separation there. I'm blood with my blood relatives, and I'm blood with the family of God, the church. The Bible calls the church the bride of Christ and the body of Christ. The Bible knows nothing, watch this, about Lone Ranger Christians, hopping believers, solitary saints, spiritual hermits who are isolated from other believers. Instead, the Bible says we are put together, joined together, built together, members together, heirs together, fitted together, held together, and at the rapture, we will be caught up together. We are the family of God, and the family of God is supposed to be together. If you've been born again of the water and of the spirit, and we're all born again of the water and of the spirit, we are blood relatives. We're family. We're the body of Christ, the church, and we're supposed to be together. And because we're family, if you was raised in any kind of decent home, there was always chores in the family. I feel bad if y'all raising kids and they ain't got no chores. <laughs> yeah, they don't want to do nothing. Too bad. You live in my house. You eat my food. You wear the clothes that I bought. You going to do something up around here. Don't let your kids try to tell you what to do. Because that's your baby. Ooh, I love my baby. You still make sure they do what they're supposed to do. Raise them up the right way. But in every family, there are chores. In every family, each member has chores, responsibilities that he or she are responsible to do. And it's the same when you are a member of the family of God. Mm -hmm. Membership. That word membership is of Christian origin, but the world has emptied it of its original meaning. Today, watch this, membership is simply adding your name to the roll with no requirements or expectations. So let's just stop there for a second. If you are born again of the water and of the spirit, and you're in the family, and all you do is just show up, and there is nothing that you do, what kind of family member are you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In my house, when my kids don't do what they're supposed to do, my wife keeps telling them, and they know how to kind of act like they don't hear her or, you know, try to work around her, and all she say is, Wayne, I'm not playing. She don't, wait, she don't call me right away because she know I don't want him coming up here and just messing everything up because he'll destroy them. And so she wait for a long time before she called me when they start to mumble and grumble. But when I come, everything laid down. I'm getting every, everybody doing what they're supposed to do. I can't beat you because you ain't my child. We brothers and sisters. But when you don't do your chores in God's family, the daddy of the family do the beating. <laughs> you, thought you, you thought you were going to be a part of his family and don't do anything and he just okay with it? No, it don't work that way. So if you're a member of the church, the family of God, there, there, there are requirements and expectations of us. The Apostle Paul says, a member of the church 
is a vital organ of a living body, an indispensable, interconnected part of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 12, verse number 4, this is again the TLB version. It says this, just as there are many parts to our bodies, so it is with Christ's body. We are all parts of it. And it takes every one of us to make it complete. For we each have different work to do. So we belong to each other and each needs all the others. One of the things that we overlook as people, I always say this, when God created us, he created us that we would not have every talent, every ability. He created us and he gave us ability, several abilities according to his purpose. And in order for us to ever be the best that we can, it's going to take us working together. When we go by ourselves and we're, we're doing things on our own, we could never maximize our potential. We will maximize our potential when we do it together. Because you have something that I need, and I have something that you need, and you have something that she needs, and he has something that he needs, and that's the body of Christ. We need each other for it to work the way God wanted it to work. When we're not together, we're cheating the body of Christ. An organ severed from its body shrivels and dies. It cannot exist on its own, and neither can you and I as Christians. <laughs> That's why the first symptom of spiritual decline in our lives is usually inconsistent attendance at the worship services and stay into yourselves. When you find yourself being inconsistent in attending church services or you just want to be by yourself, you are on your way to spiritual decline. And when you're in spiritual decline, the enemy can take advantage of you. You begin to think that things are one way when they are another way because you're not seeing spiritually. And when you're not seeing spiritually, you don't understand spiritual things. You can only understand carnal things. And when you hear spiritual things, it's hard to receive it because you're in a carnal state. I know we thought, oh, you know, I'm getting here this week because I can, but next week I won't be able to. That's our mindset. But can I just pause right here and tell you, church, we have to begin to see ourselves, our church, and what we do from the perspective of Jesus Christ and not from our own perspective. So many of us are trying to live for God from our own perspective. I don't see why we should. I don't understand what's the need of that. You're looking at it from your perspective. You didn't create the church. You're not sustaining the church. You do not understand the plan of the church. It's only the head of the church that determines what happens with the church. And so we are so intelligent and smart now that we try to intellectualize what we see and what we think. Listen, we might have our professions that we're good at. Uh, we have our skills and abilities that we know we're great at. That's wonderful. Don't bring that to Jesus. Don't bring that and think because of how your world works, this is the way it should work in his church. His church don't work like how you run your life. His church don't work like how you operate on your job. His church work the way he wants it to work and how he says it's going to work. And that's it and that's all. We have to cut this thing out where we think that the church needs to be a certain way. 
the way we view it, the way we were brought up, the traditions that we experienced. No, go to the Word and say, what should the church look like? And I'll tell you where to go in the Word. Go in the book of Acts where the church got started and say, what was the church like when it started? And so you can know what the church should be doing. But having your own perspective and your own thoughts, it will lead you astray. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, TLB, TLB version again, let us not neglect our church meetings, as some people do, but encourage and warn each other, especially now that the day of his coming back again is drawing near. God says, my return is near. We shouldn't be neglecting to meet as the body. The family. <laughs> the church is the family of God. That's the way it was when it started, and it will continue even in the millennium reign. He will always expect for us to be together. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, I'm reading now in the King James Version. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the instructions of how to get into the family of God. All the other stuff, you need to make a note of this. If people are not doing it this way, watch yourself. Let me touch on this real quick. There are people that's baptizing people. And they says, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and, uh, and of the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus. Show me that in the Bible. Show me that in the Bible. We're making those things up. You know why? Because we don't want to admit that we were wrong. Our pride getting away. If I stand before you and I misunderstood the scripture, I got to come back before you and say, I misunderstood the scripture. Forgive me. This is the way the scripture was meant to be spoken about. And so many people have been baptizing people in titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And now they're hearing people like me and other preachers that preach about the baptism in Jesus' name, and they're realizing that's what's in the Bible. Now instead of them saying, I can't undo all the people I've baptized in the titles. But what I can do is start right now and start baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ. And for all those people I've baptized in titles, if you hear me out there, come back. I'll rebaptize you in the name of Jesus. Why won't they do that? Pride. Some of it money. Because we're doing stuff for money. We're doing it because of our pride. God is the head of this family, and we have no right to, to do whatever we want. Everything we do must be according to his word. Mm -hmm. He says, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. I preach week in and week out about being saved, that the only way to be saved is repentance, baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, the infilling of the gift of the Holy Ghost, with the evidence to speak with tongues. Some people gladly receive it and get baptized. Others didn't gladly receive it, so they didn't get baptized. And the same day, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. This is how the church got started. Now watch this, verse 42. So now people repented. They got baptized in Jesus' name. They got filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, guess what? They have been born into the church. Now that they've been born into the church, what happened from that point. Verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, meaning in the word of God, in fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed 
What were they? That's the family of God. We're supposed to be together. It started out that way, and it will continue that way. We're supposed to be together. If we've been born again into the family of God, we need to realize we should be together and have all things in common. Just like we have robbed the words church and membership of their biblical meaning, we're also done. We've, we've done the same to the word fellowship. We don't give the word fellowship its proper meaning. We, we don't function according to the true meaning of fellowship. Fellowship is now referred to as casual conversation, socializing, Food and fun. That's what we call fellowship. But hear me today. Real fellowship is so much more than just showing up at church services. It is experiencing, real fellowship is experiencing life together. Real fellowship is loving one another. Real fellowship is praying for one another. Real fellowship is encouraging one another. Real fellowship is admonishing one another. Real fellowship is greeting one another, serving one another, teaching one another, accepting one another, honoring one another, forgiving one another, submitting to one another, being devoted to one another, bearing each other's burden and many other more things. That's real fellowship. Not just say we show up to church. Again, we've got our meaning of what we think the family of God is all about. But God has a different meaning. Just how important is fellowship? It is absolutely crucial. If we don't have fellowship, the Bible says we're not walking in the light. You don't believe that? 1 John 1 and 7. I told you, biblical church, straight word, straight word. We can leave happy and be glad about the word, or we can leave shaking our head. But you know what? It's the word. It ain't the preacher's word. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. It's clear. When we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. So does it mean that if we're avoiding one another, we might not be walking in the light? And so, and so we, we avoid one another because, you know, we're not in the light. Can we be honest? There are people, when you're not in the light, and you see somebody that's in the light, you kind of hide from them. Yeah, I don't want to see, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want them, I don't want them to see me, I don't want them to see me, I don't want them to see me. So you know, uh, I don't want them to see me. Because you're not in the light. So I know, the, I know this word is accurate. When we're in the light, we have fellowship with one another. So when we're in the light, I go door knocking. I don't know how, but I go knock on people's door. We have a team that go, we knock on people's door, say, hello, my name is Wayne. How are you today? And they said, well, I'm fine. I said, well, we're from the local church. We're not far from here, and we're just knocking on doors. We're praying with folks, and we're just inviting you to join us whenever you can. Want to know if there's anything at all we can do for you or your family? Is there anything that we can do? And they said, well, you know, um, I go to another church. I said, okay. God bless you if you ever need anything. Boom. Some people close the door and says, I ain't going to tell you what they say, but they tell, they tell me they're of a different denomination. And when they tell me they're of a different denomination, I walk away saying, I guess, you know, it's not one God. Because when you start telling me you're in, a, you're, in a, you're in a different denomination, I'm saying, okay. So is there a different God for that denomination over there? I thought it was one God. One God means if we're all born again, family, we walk in the light together. We're serving one God. So why would we try to avoid each other if we're serving the same God and we're in right standing with the same God? Just something to think about. 
1 John 4 and 20 in the NIV version, it says, if anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he's a liar. I didn't say it. I, I'm, I'm reading. You reading it too? You reading it? If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, man, God, that's our daddy telling us that. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. That makes sense to me. Telling me you love somebody that you haven't seen, but you, 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 know, you, you know, the people before you can't love them and you see them. Can I just tell you this? When we say we love, we're not talking about just loving people that is just good to us. That's where we're twisting love at. We think that the reason why we love people is because they've been nice to us or they respect us. Because they respect us, we're going to love them. Because they treat us right, we're going to love them. That's not what the Bible called you to do. Because guess what? We were heathen. We were disrespectful to God. We were sinners. We were wretch undone. And God still loved us. If we're going to be like Jesus, uh, we got to love people no matter what. I don't care if they respect you or they don't treat you right. Your responsibility is to love them still. In case you don't know, there's a scripture that says, Oh, no man, nothing except to love him. You can have all your bills paid. You don't owe no debt collector. You don't owe anything except we owe love to one another. That came from our father who loves us all. Now, if you let that just simmer, um, just forget. If, if you don't remember anything I said today, just let that simmer right there that I owe love to everybody. That ain't no joke. And you want to know what the definition of love is? Everybody got a definition of love. But we got to go to the one who is love. God is love. So... You don't want to get your definition of love from any place else but from God. Watch this. God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. That's surface. And y'all like that. Here is what y'all missed. So we can understand what we have to do. In case you don't understand, God, who at the time never revealed himself as human. He did what he did by spirit. But he loved us so that there was only one way he could have delivered us from our sins. The only way he could have delivered us from our sins, he had to become like one of us. And then when he became like one of us, he had to live like us and never sinned. And then after that, he had to lay down, give his life so he could be crucified, shed his blood because only blood can purge sin and did all that and then rose from the grave on the third day. That's what he did because he said he loved. So now, how did that compute to us? It means that when we say we love people, we do whatsoever is necessary. Not doing anything unrighteous, but anything that is necessary that's righteous to benefit the person we say we love. There is no line drawn in the sand. There is no, I, go, I went this far and I'm not going any further. The Bible says, how much should you forgive your brother or sister that sinned against you? 70 times 7. So that's just going right along with loving people. It means that I can't draw the line and say, say, you did it too many times. I'm done with you. That's our understanding, our way of living. That's not God's way. You should not do too much for me to say I'm done with you. Because the truth of the matter is, if God had to count all of our sins, he would be done with us a long time ago. He would have been done with you. He would have been done with me because we sinned a whole lot. 
We can't be done with people if we're going to live like the Lord wants us to live. They done did that one too many times. Yeah, and you living how you want. You're not living according to God's word. I told you this is a Bible teaching church. And God don't ask us to do anything that's impossible. He does what's impossible. You hear me? God does what's impossible. We do what's possible. So if he says that we can do it, we can do it. Preacher, I hear you, but man, you don't know. Please don't start with that. We always got to figure out a way how to try to still be who we are. No, let God change you. Let God work in your life. Let God do what he needs to do in your life. Stop telling yourself, we don't understand. We don't understand, but he understands. He became human, and he lived this life, and he never sinned, so he does understand. So maybe I don't understand, and maybe your neighbor don't understand, but the one that created you, he understands. So don't go around telling people you don't understand what they did to me. You don't understand what I've been through. He understands because you don't understand what he's been through. Do we understand what he's been through? And he has given us this commandment. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Every time we say to ourselves, I love God, just follow up in your mind. Do I love my brothers and sisters? And if, and if you're wrestling with that, you got to go to God and say, God, I say I love you, but apparently I don't love you like I think I do. When are we going to get real with ourselves? Apparently, I don't love you, God, like I, I think I do because I got some issues with some people that I ain't messing with them. And if you ain't messing with them, you ain't loving God like you think you do. Woo-wee. Woo-wee. We have to fellowship and love one another and be with one another. We're going to heaven together if we keep the faith. We're going to heaven together if we're born again and we live according to God's word. And we have to learn how to live together in harmony, in love, in kindness, and in, in being there for one another. Check this out. Real, authentic fellowship. Authentic fellowship is not superficial, surface-level chit-chat. It is genuine, heart-to-heart -heart sharing. It only happens when people get honest about who they are and what's happening in their life. When you have real, authentic fellowship, only, it only happens when people share their hurts, reveal their feelings, confess their failures, disclose their doubts, admit their fears, acknowledge their weaknesses, and then ask for help and prayer. Sadly, that's the exact opposite of what you find in many churches. Instead of atmospheres of honesty and humility, there's only pretending, politicking, mask wearing. People act as if everything is rosy in their own lives and living a lie. Living a lie. Making it look all like it's good because we don't want to have real fellowship. We just want to cut it. We just want to slide in and slide out. You don't want nobody to know. Church, we can't fool ourselves because that's the only person we're fooling. Man, can you, if you will get the victory over people, man, you will be, what you say, first lady, people will always be people. If you would just get the victory over people and stop worrying about what they think about you, you would be so much further than where you are. You would be living for God in so much victory, but we worry so much about people. I'm not here to pretend. This, this ain't about pretending because when we pretend, we're only fooling ourselves because the Bible says God knows our heart. He knows our thoughts. God knows. The devil don't know your thoughts. The devil don't know what's in your heart. But God does. Check this out. God knows everything to the point where before you get the next thought you're going to get, God already knows it. So we look kind of foolish 
pretending in front of God. If he knows the thought before we get them, why are we pretending in front of him? To impress people but be in a bad spot with God? No, nah, I got past it a long time ago. I'd rather you talk bad about me and God said, that's my boy. He doing all right. He just repented. He, he cried out to me at the altar. He asked for forgiveness. And now I'm blessing him and I'm working in his life. I, I'd rather that goes on than, make it, than worrying about what you think of me. You want to be right with God, not with people. Not to mention, here is some, here is what we like to call a nugget. Here's a nugget. Eventually, if you live right with God, the people that was talking about you is going to stop talking about you because they're going to see your life and say, nah, they legit. They legit. At some point in time, they got to say, nah, they legit. You just got to keep walking with Jesus. Keep living for Jesus. Keep serving Jesus. Keep being authentic with him and don't try to act like it's all good when it's not. Being authentic requires both courage and humility. If we're going to be authentic, we need to have courage, which if we don't, ask God. Give me courage, Lord. And humility. Be humble. When you're humble, you're not concerned about what people think about you. You just say, okay. When we're humble, God can work in our life. And when we're humble, we will face our fears of exposure, rejection, and being hurt again. We're always worried about being hurt. And that's why we treat people the way we do sometimes. I ain't never going to let them do that to me again. Here we go again. Here we go again. Judas walked with Jesus. And Jesus knew Judas was going to betray him. What did he do to Judas? Nothing. Why are we thinking that I ain't never going to let them do it? I ain't never giving them no chance to do this to me again. The Lord who created us came as human, walked the earth, and they were doing all kinds of things to him. What was he supposed to say? You know what? I'm not even going to no cross. That's how we sound. It's a joke, but that's how we sound. I'm not, I'm not, no, that's the, that, no, no, that's it, I've had it. I told them jokers to pray with me in the garden, and they couldn't even pray with me one hour. I'm getting ready to go to the cross. They couldn't pray with me one, nah, 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 I'm not going to the cross. That's what we do all the time when we're worried about protecting our hurt. You're going to be hurt as long as you're alive, physically, mentally, emotionally, all kindly. You're going to be hurt. You can't protect that. You can't stop that. You just have to deal with that. And then we want to quote. The Lord said he'll fight my battle. Can you let him fight it and you stop fighting it? Because when you're trying to protect your hurt, you're trying to fight your own battle. Will you let him fight your battle? Will you let the Lord take care of you? He said, cast your care upon me. Won't you let him do his job and stop trying to do his job for him? Let him do his job. Why am I preaching to you like this? Because I want us to really be the family of God that he created us to be. Why am I preaching like this? Because I want us to live as family, as the word of God wants us, as God wants us to be family. That's why I'm preaching like this. So we can get rid of all of our ideologies. We can get rid of all of our hang-ups and all of the things that we, 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 we bring into our life that's preventing us from being everything God wants us to be. James chapter 5. I'm getting ready to close in a second here. James chapter 5, verse 16. TLB virgin. Listen to what it says. We missed this one. So you know we're in it. Admit your faults. But we all got to protect our reputation. Now you've heard me preach about this. The Bible talks about when Almighty God became human, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible said, his word said, he made himself 
of no reputation. Why are you trying to protect your reputation? The almighty God who created, who have every right to protect whatever he wanted, he never protected his reputation. So why are we protecting our reputation? And so we never get to live in true victory like we need to because we're trying to protect our reputation. The Bible says, admit your faults to one another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous man has great power and wonderful results. Can I tell you a secret? When you go and admit your fault to a spiritual good brother or good sister, it's so easy. It's so easy because they love God and they love you. And they're like, yeah, don't worry about it. That's what happens when you go to a spiritual person. Okay? We all preach them. But sometimes I thought they were spiritual. And then I went to them and I realized, oh, snap. Then now you know what you need to do? Pray for them. Because when you do what the word says and go to someone and share something with them and they handle it the wrong way, they're not in a good position with the Lord. So now you're supposed to say, oh, snap, they're not doing good with God. If they're going to say this and say that, this is all in your mind. If they're going to say this and say that, then they're not right with God. I need to pray for them. There's a word in, 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 in the Beatitudes that says, pray for your enemies. No, 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 sorry, sorry. Let me quote it right. Love your enemies and pray for them who despitefully use you. That's the word of God. And so if people mistreat you, if people do you wrong when you're trying to do right, what are you worrying about that for? Why you got to go talk about, oh, I, I can't, I'm not taking that. We got we to gotta, we gotta get this family stuff right because God is building himself a great family. We're all part of it. Those of us that are in it, those of us that's not in it, we got to get in it. But God is building a great family, but we have to learn what he's teaching and instructing and start doing. We're not just showing up on Sundays just to hear a good word and a preacher entertain you. That's not what this is about. This is for us to learn, receive, worship, let it change our life. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We are no longer strangers to God and foreigners to heaven when we are born again and become a part of God's family. But we are members of God's very own family, citizens of God's country, and you belong in God's household with every other Christian. Last Friday when we had our district conference, our headquarters official uh, made mention of the church in a way that I never thought about, but he was so on point. He says the church is like the American embassy in a foreign country. Do you know that whatever embassy that you belong to, wherever it is, when you're there, if you're in, so for instance, just say you are in Canada. Let's just use our neighbors that are nice. You're in Canada, <laughs> and, 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 and something happens, and, and, and you're trying to get out of there because there's trouble, and you want to get to safety. Do you know that you don't have to get on a plane and fly to America or drive real hard to go to the border and cut across? The best thing that you can do is go to the embassy. Why is that, preacher? Because the embassy is American soil in Canada. Once you get into the gates of the embassy, you're on American soil even though you're in a foreign country. You, you, come on, figure it out with me. Come on, don't let me preach it all the way. Figure it out. We may not be in heaven yet. We may not be walking on the street of gold yet, but once we become family, once we are a part of the family of God, the church, we are on heavenly soil while we're here in this foreign country. <laughs> this is foreign country for God's family, but as long as we're in the church, we are in the heavenlies while we're still here in this earth. You can't get no better than that. I know we didn't think about that, but that is so good. We are no strangers anymore. We're not strangers anymore. Guess what? We're not foreigners because we are in the family of God. We're members of the family of God. We 
we're no longer inferior or in any inferior position, but fellow citizens with the saints, the people whom God has separated to himself out of the world. The idea of this chosen people all through the Old Testament is that they are as a whole consecrated to God. From Old Testament all the way to the New Testament, God has called his people to be consecrated unto him. Back in the Old Testament, priests and kings were appointed by God to perform their duties. Today, in this time, the whole Old Testament thing is transferred and it only deepens and intensifies to the Christian church, the family of God. Guess what? As family, we are the body of Christ. We are brothers and sisters. But guess what I love about it? The Bible says that we are priestly people. And so in the Old Testament, they appointed priests to minister. When you become born into the family of God, you become a priest. And when you become a priest, what did the Old Testament priests do? They ministered. Well, when we are born into God's family, we are all priests. The Bible says we're a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, a holy nation. We're supposed to minister to each other because we're the family of God. God has given us everything we need within the body, and whatever the body doesn't have, he will provide. We are the family of God. Stand with me. Galatians. Let me close with this. Galatians. Chapter 3. Verse 26. Look what it says. It says in Galatians 3, 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Now let me stop there. You can't have faith and no works. Because I don't want you to read that and just think, well, I got faith, so I am the family. I'm, I'm in the family. It's not how it works, church. If you have faith, faith will move you to works. If we say we have faith and there is no works, then we really don't have faith. So if I said, I believe, and you hear me preach God's word, but you don't respond to God's word, you really didn't believe. You're just kind of, you know, making yourself feel good, telling yourself what you want to hear. For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ. When you have faith in Christ and you're not born again, your faith in Christ make you become born again. So you say, I have faith, and I know there's more that God wants to do in my life. What is it, preacher? You tell me because I'm going to do it. What happened to that? What happened to that, Bishop, where you've seen it? I can only preach about what we saw in the church, but you've seen it. Back in the day when we were rocking, people did anything to be a part of ministry. First lady, they did anything. Crook and hook. Even, it was crazy because people would do conniving things. They lie and say they're doing this when they're not doing it. But all they knew is they wanted to be in ministry. So they did whatever it took. Now that wasn't right. If you say you're going to be in something and do what's right, just do right and be in it. Don't say you're going to be in it and not do what is required. But my point of this is, today, I wouldn't thought I would be saying this, but today, we don't want to do anything. So the question is, do we really have faith today? Because we don't want to do anything. We, we, we be try, I be telling them all day, I said, man, we need audiovisual workers. We need ushers, you know. And I go, I, I just keep talking about, you know, the need in the church. And people are like, yeah, I would like to help, but, I, you know, I work. <laughs> I'm not telling you not to work. Can I tell you this? I'm, I'm, I'm almost 30 years at my job, and that ain't never stopped me from serving God with all my heart. 
I was taking lunch breaks long time ago to go give out tracts or to go baptize people or to go visit at the hospital. Lunch breaks. Because when you have a willing desire to do something, God opens up the door. So you know what he did? He made sure I had favor on the job. So when I tell him, hey, can I take a couple hours? I'll be right back. Yeah, go ahead. Because God knew I had a desire to serve him. So for all of us that like to say, oh, you know, because of the job, I hear you. I'm just telling you, if you really want to do something for God, you tell him that. If it's really in here, you tell it and see what he does. Because I'm living it. I know it. I'm not making it up. I wanted to serve God, and he just opened the door. Almost 30 years on the same job, and today I'm still doing it. I'm still working my job, and I'm still serving the Lord, and I'm doing what I, call, I was called to do. So the bottom line is, we need to really ask ourselves, do we have faith? Because if we really have faith, we won't make any excuses. We'll go to God and say, God, I have faith in you. I believe. And I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to be a part of your church. I want, to, I want to be a part of your family. And I've just heard that being a part of the family don't mean I just show up for church services. So I need to be a part of the family. Will you help me and, and, and work, whether it's my job, make there be a, a situation where I can get into the uh, church and be a part of the ministry. Whatever it is, God, you know it. I want to be a part of the family real strong. I just don't want to show up at services. I want to be a part of the family real strong. And let me just say this, last part. When you say you want to be a part of God's family because you want to serve, there are requirements to serve in God's family. Years ago, one of my first jobs was Burger King. I couldn't work in my regular clothes at Burger King. I had to put on the Burger King uniform. So why do we want to come into church? We, do, we be play, trying to play, we be playing God, as I like to say. And I don't mean playing like we're God. We be trying to play him like he's some punk. We go to the secular place and they tell us all kind of stuff we need to do. And all we can think, dollar sign, clink, clink. Yeah, okay, no problem, I'll do that. Yes, I'll be here right on time, 8 o'clock. As a matter of fact, I show up 745. You need to wear steel toe boots for this job. Steel toe boots? Where can I get them? Yeah, you can go to Walmart or something. Oh, I'm getting steel toe. I'll be here Monday. You know I tell the truth. I'm a regular guy just like you. And then you come to the church, and we say that in order to be a part of this ministry, you got to dress a certain way, you got to follow certain guidelines, and you say, you ain't got to do all of that. Okay. Please your secular, and I'll keep pleasing my God and the family. We'll see at the end who gets the goods. We got to get out of this mindset, making, making this like, the, you know, the church is putting stipulation on you. Last thing I'll say about that, remember, Jesus Christ is the head of the family, the church. Please don't go around telling people, I'm telling you what to do, because everything I tell you is in this book. Go tell people, Jesus required this of me. Don't go telling them the church. Jesus required. He's running the church, not man. How y'all doing out there? Listen to me. Understand this. When people love you, they care about you, and they're passionate about the things that they're trying to do to help you. So whatever you see coming from me, it's only because I want to help you the best way I can. I want to be clear as I can in teaching God's word to you because I want God's will to be done in your life. Not to mention, I got to give an account to him that I did everything he wanted me to do. But just understand this, that's what this is about. You don't want to go to some place where all you do every week you go in and you get a, a good high and you go home and then Monday and Tuesday, here come the devils and you can't beat none of them because you never get empowered by the spirit and the word. And you, gotta, you can't wait till Sunday to get your little drug again to go back. You, that's not what God intends for us. 
He intends for us to live in victory every day, not just on Sundays between 1030 and 1230. Not, not just those days. It's his will that we live victoriously. And sometimes I got to communicate the word of God to you with, with clarity and with passion and, and, and hoping that you're hearing what I'm saying because it's not my word. We are the family of God. If you're not yet a part of the family of God because you haven't been born again, you need to do so. Don't procrastinate. We don't know if tomorrow is promised unto us. And I've been in situations where God has told me to go and reach out to someone because, can I tell you this? Some of you might know this and some of you won't know. I'm closing. There's this guy that I went to school with and hung out in the street with for a little bit. His name is Joseph Gaines. Somebody might know that name. But Joseph Gaines was very, very well known in Trenton. His daddy used to pastor church, and, but he just left. He used to hang out with me because he liked the Jamaican culture, and so he started hanging out with me, and you know, we, we did some things together, but I didn't do everything he did. And years had gone by, we'd grown, we out of school and everything, and one day the Lord gave me a dream and told me, go tell him that he need to give his life to me. I went to a funeral, um, um, East State and Clinton whatever that church name is, and it was a crowd because it was somebody in the streets that died. And I looked out and I saw Joe Gaines, and I was going inside, and I couldn't go inside because the Lord had told me, and I went through all the crowd. PG, yo, what's up, man? What's up, Dread? Hug, talking. I said, look at me, look at me. I got a word from the Lord for you. And I told him, the Lord told me to tell you that you need to get in the church right now. Tears came into his eyes. I said, you know I love you. And I walked away, went to the funeral. Weeks or months later, he got shot up. I went to the hospital, me and his son. Y'all know his son. And me and him, I said, come on, we're going to pray. And I went in there two times. And I held him and I prayed hard. He never came out of the coma. Never came out of the coma. Hard, man. These are the things I know. So when I come and stand before you, I, there's the word that's talking, but there's experience that's talking too. And so hear me, if you haven't given your life to God, you're not going to hear this kind of preaching everywhere you go. That's not because I'm anybody. It's because I was brought up in the right thing. It's because I learned from the right people. It's because, you know, I'm connected to people that knew this stuff and helped me with this stuff. So I'm able to communicate it to you. It's not because I'm a know-it-all. It's because I just happened God led me in the right place. But it's time that if you haven't surrendered your life to God and get into the family of God, please don't let the times that you hear the preach words slip away from you. Close your eyes with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, your word has gone forth. And Lord, it's up to you as you move on the hearts of every one of us now. As you establish what has been spoken here today in our hearts. Lord, we don't want to leave today without, oh God, making sure that the will of God is done. And I pray for every person that is not yet a part of the family of God. That, Lord, as you move on their heart, they will come forth to this altar. And they will surrender to you and say, Lord, here I am. I may not have been ready because I didn't expect to hear what I heard today. But if you're ready for me, Lord, to become a part of the family of God, I will humbly surrender my life to you. I will give myself to you. <laughs> I come against the spirit of pride right now, Lord God. For pride is trying to dominate your people and prevent them, Lord, from responding in obedience to your word. But I command pride to leave this place. I command pride to leave the life of those that is trying to overtake and dominate. Oh, my God, I lose.
lose the spirit of humility upon this church right now. I lose the spirit of humility, Lord God. Oh, move on the heart of your people that there will be repentance, Lord God. And there will be surrenderance, Almighty God. And the people of God will say, yes, Lord, to your will. Yes, Lord, to your way. Oh, Father, have your way today. Not our will but thine will be done today, Lord God. And we will not walk away, Lord God, without allowing this word, Lord God, to take root in us, to grow and produce good fruit. Father, have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. Have your way in our heart. Have your way in our mind. Somebody hear and respond today. Don't let this day pass you by. Don't let this opportunity pass you by to get into the family of God uh, to re-establish yourself uh, as a member of the family of God. Uh, let God have his way today. Uh, you need to respond today because God uh, has expectations of you uh, for the family. God has responsibilities for you uh, as part of the family. He wants to get you involved. Uh, he wants to raise you up. Uh, he wants to work in you. Uh, he wants to give you the victory. Uh, he wants you to walk in the light and not in darkness. Will you trust him today? Will you humble yourself to the Lord today? Will you surrender to the Lord Jesus? Oh, glory, hallelujah. Lift your hands with me and begin to surrender. Begin to humble yourself before the Lord Jesus. He wants to help you. If you will humble yourself before God, he will lift you up. He will lift you up. He will lift you up. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. Let him have his way. Let Jesus have his way. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 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 Come on and worship the Lord. Worship him, worship him. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, pray with somebody right now. Somebody needs to be touched by the Lord. Will you pray with somebody right now? Pray with somebody. Pray with somebody. We're family. Pray with somebody. Let God touch somebody.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have one to get baptized. In the name of Jesus. Bring her over here. What's your name? Autumn. Autumn is going to get baptized today. She's going to enter the family of God. We have another one. Autumn is going to enter into the family of God. I believe you can receive God's spirit when you come out, come up out of that water today. God has spoken to your heart, and you are letting him have his way. That's the way it works. Anyone else? Anyone else before we close at our service? We have another one. Where's her parents? Where's her parents? Her parents co-sign? Okay, we have two to get baptized. Bring her up. Bring her up. Come on. Anybody else? You're ready to get into the family of God, not just by your lip service, but you're going to do it because you have faith. Come on, baby. Come here. What's your name? Atelia. Uh, Autumn and Atelia, two A's. Hallelujah. You need something, Sister Kendra? That's your baby. Okay. All right. Hallelujah. I want you to point your hands toward Autumn and Atelia. We're going to pray for them. Father, in the name of Jesus, as they surrender their life to you today, Lord, I pray that you will work greatly, mightily, miraculously in their life, that you will order their steps from this day on, that, Lord, they will realize that they're being born into the family of God, that they will trust you, that they will humble themselves before you continuously. Lord, will you be their shield and buckler let no harm or danger come to them. And Lord, I pray that they will walk by faith and not by sight, Lord. Bless their goings and their comings. Open doors for them, Lord God. And Lord, I pray that you'll push back the forces of evil and that darkness will not have any place in their life. Have your way, Lord. Bless them, Lord, and let your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Get them ready for baptism, please. Oh, hallelujah. Okay. Talk to me. You want to get baptized? Yeah. This is your mom. And she said you can get baptized? Really? Okay. All right, we're going to get you baptized. What's your name? Amira. Three A's getting baptized today. Amira. Can you imagine that? Otto, Atelia, and Amira. In the name of Jesus. Only God can do these things. Bless Amira, Lord God. We want your will to be done in her life, Lord. Lord, at her age, I pray that you will use her mightily and miraculously. Open her eyes to see your glory and that she will walk in truth and righteousness and that you will use her, Lord God, for your glory. Bless her and keep her. In Jesus' name, amen. Get her ready. Who else? We need somebody to get the brother, sister, cook. Hallelujah. Family of God, let's start acting like the family of God. Let's start being transparent. Let's love one another and treat each other the way God said we must. We are the family. And guess what? This is the family that lives eternally together. Just think about that. If we stay on course, do what we're supposed to do, we will be together for all eternity. Lord, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the assembling, the gathering of the body of Christ, the family of God. As we go from this place, will you keep your hands upon us? Lord, let every word that was spoken here today that's according to your will, let it fill the hearts and the minds of each and every person. We pray that the Holy Spirit, Lord God, will continue to minister to our spirit. And that, Lord, we will be who you call us to be. Bless us as we travel to our respective places of dwelling. As we give you the praise and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I love you, church. I love you. Have a great rest of your day.